we're going to talk about tourniquet conversion. Here you see an arterial bleed. It could be squirting as you see here, or it could simply be pooling in the cavity because it's blocked by tissue or other mass. So not always squirting. Now, this is uh, usually found in the extremity. So you're going to start with direct pressure above the wound, usually pushing on a long bone and the artery onto that long bone, like a brachial artery. Next, we're gonna go to our primary treatment, which is a tourniquet. You can see here, I'm not wearing gloves because this is a life and death situation where if I was to take a minute to put gloves on, they may bleed out. So we're gonna not put gloves in that initial phase of care, unless you're a EMS provider and already have them on. Securing the tourniquet and the bleeding has stopped. We get to this two hour mark now where all the data shows that no damage will happen to the extremity within those two hours. I'm now grabbing all my equipment, so I have my gloves, I have some quick clot, and some kind of wrap that I'm gonna use to wrap that gauze after it is packed. You don't have to use quick clot here, but uh, any type of cotton gauze um, or any other hemostatic agent would work. Now, as I'm packing the wound, this is critical to pack it in a systematic way where you're creating equal pressure all throughout that cavity. As you can see, I'm going to every corner, I'm going in the middle, all around and really trying to build this kind of a cork inside this cavity. The pressure is the key here. Pressure is king, you've heard that term. So now I put direct pressure with the remaining gauze on the top and I'm gonna wrap it. In this case, I'm using some North American Rescue um, pressure dressing, but you can also use any type of pressure wrap or any other bandage. A lot of times in kits, uh, trauma kits, you will see that a pressure wrap is used because there's no need for the padding since the wound is already packed. But either way, that will work as long as you get pressure on it. Now is when we do the conversion. I begin with slowly and methodically releasing the tourniquet. I'm not removing it, but simply and under control, releasing the pressure on the windlass rod. I wanna do this in a way that takes about one, maybe two minutes. And during this time, I'm really paying attention to the circulation and perfusion of that extremity. For example, if it's the arm, we're looking to see if color's coming back to those fingertips and to the arm itself. This is important process because remember, we're trying to create a clot in that cavity. And if there is no blood in there because of the initial tourniquet, now is the first time that blood may be introduced into that cavity when we release the tourniquet. If blood is not introduced because the tourniquet already stopped all the bleeding and it created a clot by itself, that's great. However, we have to allow the hemostatic gauze to work and begin the internal clotting cascade if you're using quick clot or the external clotting cascade, meaning creating a clot from the outside for using another hemostatic agent. Remember, you can use regular gauze here too and it would just take a little more time with that pressure on that cavity. We're really taking our time to make sure there's no bleeding from the gauze, no bleeding from around the gauze or the bandage, and we're leaving the tourniquet in place, so that way if it does continue to bleed, we can put the tourniquet back on and tighten it so it stops the bleed. Thanks for taking your time to watch this video. May we all be able to be the difference and save lives together.